This is Your Money, Your Wealth. And welcome to another edition of Your Money, Your Wealth. My name is Joe Anderson. I am a certified financial planner, president of Pure Financial Advisors. I'm with, as always, the big man, Big Al Clopine. We'll be talking to him shortly. Let me ask you a quick question. We have a great show lined up, but it's based on things that a lot of you don't have. Question number one, do you have an estate plan? Question number two, do you have any idea what an estate plan is? When I say estate plan, most people think about what happens when you die. And so don't worry about it. Over the next half hour, we're not going to be doom and gloom and talk about death, disability, dismemberment. Maybe we will, but it's very important stuff. So that's what's on my mind today. Latest study came out, 64% of you do not have an estate plan. What an estate plan is, is just a written documentation of letting someone know what happens to your stuff, to you, if you can't act for yourself. So either you die or you're disabled. Now, there's a lot of important documents here that a lot of you are probably unaware of. There's simple things that you can do to make sure that your financial house is in order in case something bad happens to you. This is big stuff because a lot of you have accumulated a lot of wealth or maybe that you have loved ones, kids that you want to make sure that are taken care of if you can't take care of them um, on your own. So let's kind of dive in. Let's bring on my partner, Big Al Clopine. Big Al, let's talk about death, buddy. It's, you know, what's going to happen when you die? Or maybe you fall off a ladder and you can't necessarily do the things that you want to do. Well, I'm just sitting here thinking this is such an important topic, but to talk about death, on Saturday morning? I don't know, something, something <laughs> seems wrong with that. <laughs> but we're gonna do it anyway because this is important. There's things that you guys are missing. And we're gonna go over four main mistakes that Joe and I see over and over again in our practice. And number one is kind of obvious. You're delaying the process. A lot of you don't have a will. You don't have a trust and you need one. There's a lot of reasons why you need a trust. It's not just for your loved ones after you pass, but while you're living. You need health care directives. You need financial powers attorney and, and so forth. Uh, number two uh, is for those of you that have a trust. You've set up a living trust. You've done the right thing, but you forget to put your assets in the trust. It doesn't do you much good. The next one is estate planning. And for those of you that have estates in excess of about $5 million, you have an estate tax problem. Or I should say your, your beneficiaries, your estate has an estate tax problem. We'll get into that. And we also want to talk about a lot of uh, mistakes we're seeing with regards to beneficiary forms. And to kind of illustrate this, I think we've got a clip. Only one year after my father passed away, we learned that the beneficiary form was apparently not filled out correctly and that we would not be receiving the money from the IRA. What he did wrong was not list our names individually on the beneficiary form. When you write, as per my last will and testament, is apparently not a proper designation as to where the funds will go. I had no idea that a will could be trumped by an IRA beneficiary form. I was shocked over that fact. My father never intended this. He would be, oh, he would be so angry. He would be so mad. This is common. Now, when it comes to the beneficiary form of your retirement account, so your 401ks, IRAs, 403bs, TSPs, whatever, there's trillions of dollars sitting in these accounts. It's one of the largest assets that people have, and you want to make sure that you name the appropriate beneficiary. You might say, well, here, I have a trust. I have a will. I've documented everything in that legal document. But guess what? The beneficiary form trumps all. So you want to make sure that you update the beneficiary form. In, in, in that clip, Al, she was looking at, hey, well, it went to someone else, but he told me that it was going to go to me and my siblings. Yeah. But in his will, it had, okay, well, here, I'm going to have um, my assets go to my spouse. And I, I, and I don't know if they showed that, but he was just married for a couple of months, so I don't know if she was hanging around the hospital beds. Well, and that, yeah. <laughs> it was like looking at it's, IRA statements and then decided, hey, you're a pretty good catch. Let's I, get married. I mean, how many times have we seen the beneficiary statements? It's they're, they're off. They're wrong. You may have your parents that are deceased or you may have a, a spouse that you got divorced from and, and she or he is still on that beneficiary form. 
Now, you had no intention of those assets going to that person, but that's exactly what happens. So, Joe, let's really get into this right now in terms of what these mistakes are that we're talking about. And the first one, as I mentioned, is people are delaying the process. And think about why Why are you delaying the process? Because they're, they're thinking it's about death. I know. No one wants to talk about that, it. It's like, as soon as I set up the estate plan, what's going to happen? I'm going to die. Yeah, I know. That's exactly why we don't want to do it. And some people realize, you know, they, they don't realize how important it is. Or some people think they're just not wealthy enough to need an estate plan, and the truth is everybody needs an estate plan. We would say this, if you're 18 years and older, you need an estate plan. And it doesn't have to be complicated. For some of you, it can be a will. For some of you, it can be a trust. And, uh, but you got to have one. you got to set one up. And I guess one of the first questions we get is when we talk about an estate plan is, what is an estate plan? The, People don't know what it is. And really, it's just it's setting up a will or a trust. That's your starting point. We're going to talk about pros of a trust over will in a second. But it's more than that. It's setting up power of his attorney. It, it's setting up medical directives. It's making sure your beneficiary statements are correct. These things are so important at any age to make sure you have correct. Yeah, well, let's just use a couple quick examples. So when you think, all right, I need this elaborate estate plan. I got to hire an attorney and spend thousands of dollars on the plan. No, that's not the case at all. If you have any assets whatsoever, if you're 18 years of age or older, right, you want to make sure that you at least have a financial power of attorney and a health care directive. But let me use this as an example. When you look at, let's say, a financial power of attorney, why is this so important? Let's say that I have money in my 401k plan. I drive out of the studio this morning. Big Al is upset with me because I hogged all the camera time, <laughs> and he runs me over, right? So he <laughs> runs me over, and he kills me, and so I'm dead. So I have this 401k plan, and let's say that I have Junior at home, okay? So I have $500,000 sitting in my 401k plan. So my sole beneficiary is my son, who's five. Or maybe he's 10, it doesn't matter. He looks at the, the you know, he mourns for a couple of minutes, but then he sees this statement by Charles Schwab and goes, wow, look at this, now I'm rich. Dad was rich, now I'm rich. I have to make sure that that beneficiary form is set up correctly. Now if I die, that's easy. But let's say that I don't die. Now I'm in a coma, okay? Junior still needs to eat. Junior still needs to, to provide a lifestyle for himself, but I'm still alive, I'm not dead. So he's not the beneficiary, I'm still alive. So how is he gonna get access to the money? Is there financial powers attorney? Is there executors in place? Is there guardians in place? Simple, life happens all the time. You just wanna make sure that you're prepared. Well, you do, and, and let's talk briefly about whether you should have a will uh, or a trust, really, and, and if, if you think about it, it's like, well, do I really need a trust? And I, and I would tell you this, a trust, what it does for you is it helps avoid probate. In fact, it does avoid probate. Probate is simply the, the process through the court that the assets go to the next generation. When you have a trust, it, it happens orderly with your trustee. There's a quicker disposition of assets, and it's private. It's not a matter of public record. Yeah, well, that's all a trust does. Sometimes people think, well, if I set up this trust, a living trust, well, then that, that, that's going to avoid all sorts of taxes and I can escape from creditor. No, all it does is avoid probate. And then there's ancillary documents within an overall estate plan, such as health care directives, um, financial powers attorney, HIPAA releases, a living will, a pour over will. I mean, it depends on how elaborate that you want to get. But a, a, a trust itself, all it does is avoid probate. So remember, you're dead. So it, it, it's your kids. It's the heirs of what you really want to make sure that you protect. We got a lot more to talk about with this. Sometimes think, oh man, I don't have enough wealth to have a, an, an estate plan. No. Everyone that's watching this program just about needs an estate plan. If you want to come into our office, we'll give you a full rundown, a financial assessment to see what makes sense for you. It's absolutely free of charge. We're a fee-only financial planning firm. We don't sell products. What we do is give advice. Estate planning is a key component of your overall financial life. Make sure you don't mess this up. Call the number, 888-994-6257. When we get back, we're going to dive into some examples. Sometimes, all right, well, if I go to probate, how much is that going to cost me? It's expensive. So we'll be back in just a second. Show's called Your Money or Wealth.